laws and control fisheries regulations more effectively <clears throat> in the future to protect endangered fish stocks. As mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, GAIA-X contributes to the objectives of the European data strategy and aims to create the single cloud infrastructure used across Europe. So we have a data space based on data sovereignty, security, interoperability, and modularity. This means that data sources from different fisheries stakeholders are connected to each other and shared according to the requirements like privacy, legal, and usage, usage terms from both provider and user. This helps to prevent so-called data silos, where data is kept and only accessible to a limited number of parties, or in most cases, not used at all. The INSIGHT platform is the user interface of the FISHIX data space, hosting various sources of fisheries data, such as fishing vessel distributions and fish stock status. So you could consider the INSIGHT platform as a shop window where you see activities are advised in a dynamic mapping context and open for further analysis. The traceability app is blockchain based, which enables consumers to have direct and unalterable insights into the history of their purchased seafood from catch to retail, leading to security and transparency for customers and consumers, as well as to fair <coughs> returns and increased credibility for fishers. The development um, of these products is accompanied by three use cases, with one each on the Atlantic, Mediterranean and Baltic coast, from which we also intend to arrive policy recommendations in a sense of easing the implementation of the main EU fisheries and seafood policies. Next steps in, <clears throat> in 23 are the further development of the use cases, uh, use cases, which after previous stakeholder inclusion and consultation start in August next year. And also we have the further development of the just mentioned minimum viable products, where <clears throat> we mainly have the um, functional definition and uh, preliminary design review of the inset platform in November next year. We would very much appreciate if you could support us by providing your insights on major technical, industrial and management challenges, as well as if you could provide fisheries data near real time or historical. Please note here that all data would be handled according to the European Data Protection Regulation. Um, further, please also visit our website, fishx.eu, and subscribe to our newsletter to stay in tuned on project developments as well as upcoming events and activities. Further, please feel also invited to become part of the FishX community by sharing your expertise as an interview partner or keynote speaker, or just get in touch with us if you have any questions or anything to share. Follow us on social media and help us to spread the word. And for sure, please also register for the next working group meeting. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Fabian, for your presentation. Uh, we know uh, and we can stay with confidence that um, our project is going forward. Dear uh, guests, sorry for some technical issues. We had internet uh, problems, but now all, everything is fixed and we can uh, forward and uh, go further with our agenda. Uh, the previous discussions were used by us to create takeaways of, of the first working group meeting that took place at, uh, um, on 23rd of September, uh, which you can see now uh, on your screen. These are three questions we are uh, we have discussed, and uh, just. Here we will uh, show you now the takeaways, but I would shortly underline that the today's event is dedicated to discussion on solution approaches by development and implementation of the innovative methods and tools in the field of digitalization of the EU fishing industry in the frame of the project FishX. The general points for today's discussion are how modern um, uh, uh, digital technologies uh, can, uh, could help improving the management of fisheries, the monitoring and control, the traceability. How all this data could be better shared and explored for the consortium would be very important to get each information on practical experience of EU member states. And I would underline 
future oriented. So evaluation of these tools and methods and digitalization process uh, for, for further development. It is very, very important for us today. I would like to thank all participants for coming just one more time, wish everybody an impactful discussion. And our special words of gratitude to Mr. Dr. Follet, uh, um, who is Scientific uh, Director of Fisheries and Aquaculture Production at ILEO, Government of Flanders, Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, Fisheries Agency from Belgium. I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Follet, who will uh, uh, make a uh, keynote presentation today, and after that, we will go further with, with our discussion. Uh, the stage is yours, Mr. Pollet. Thank you in advance. Yes, thank you very much. I'll um, just try to um, share my screen. So it should be there now. Yeah, yes, I would. I would uh, remind uh, reminder our participants that below, in the right corner, below you have such an icon. Please uh, click this icon uh, to be able to see the presentation. On this icon, you see a, a, a little screen. Yes. Uh, our distinguished technical support, I am very glad that you are here and please uh, remind us and hold it under control that everybody uh, can uh, look at the presentation. Thank you. Yes, so um, I'm going to tell you about the work we've been doing on, on data collection in fisheries in Belgium. Uh, the Belgian fishing fleet is a very small one. We only have 65 vessels, mainly beam trawlers, fly shooters, and a few otter trawlers, uh, with the main target species of flatfish. And I've been thinking about how to best present this to you. And I just think it, it would be easiest if I just tell you the story on how we ended up collecting data directly from fishing vessels. So we have five vessels operational now for um, some two months. So it's, let's say, brand new. Um, we are collecting data from these vessels real time. Um, we have data on a high resolution. Let's say the resolution available by the machine uh, providing the data. And um, we have, let's say, high quality data with high quality I mean that they actually reflect reality. Uh, they come straight from the machine and there is no incentive for the fisherman to fiddle around with the data um, just because he is the primary user. And that's one of the principles that we, we have adopted from the start of the project, uh, let's say some 15 years ago, that the fisherman is the first customer. So we develop software um, apps that allow him to see the information in his own data which is quite new for most of the fishermen and uh, we provide this software for free um, and in return we get the let's say opportunity to use this high quality data um, so let's say it, it kind of started 15 years ago when me and my colleagues in the Institute were still using Excel sheets to uh, store our data, to work with our data. Uh, but as computer power increased and as data sets got more complex, we were seeing the limits of Excel to, to deal with this data, which is a wonderful tool in Excel. Um, don't get me wrong, um, but data structures become too complex to work with it. So we decided um, to hire a small IT team, uh, which ended up to be three, um, three guys with uh, special IT knowledge and really dedicated to developing a database to store our data. Data that are quite uh, variable, um, 
in terms of, of type of data, it's biological data, physical data, technical data, chemical data, ecological data, so a wide variety. Um, so we thought we need, really need this dedicated database team. Um, and we actually thought it's well, it's just storing data, developing a database, nothing special about it. So we, we thought, well, in three to six months, we'll have our database. But these IT guys uh, didn't just start building a database. They started interviewing us and everybody in the, in the institute asking questions that we never thought about. And the thing is that it's easy to make a database, but to make it functional and easy to use and easy accessible and uh, covering the needs of the users, that's a much more complicated thing. And it's actually all the functionality that is in Excel, uh, which is much more than just storing data. You have the, the, the calculation, the statistical tools, you have the, uh, the formatting, you have the visualization of graphs and tables and the interface and so on. So you have to, let's say, disentangle Excel. Um, centrally, you have a database, but you have to add different kinds of software to, the, to it to actually have the same functionality as Excel. So it took them actually two years um, to come up with a, um, with a working system. Um, at that time, for only the stock assessment data, so the fish stock assessment data. Um, and well, it surprised that, that it took so long, but when I saw the result, I was really, really happy that we invested so much time in, the, in this database. And we're still um, uh, working on it, still improving it, expanding it. And um, it's a really a very interesting tool to use. So um, I'll show you a graph, uh, a figure of, let's say, what we are doing with data in the Institute. Uh, just to give you an overview of what's the basis and where it ends up. So centrally, as I said, we have this ILGO integrated database. And today we are talking about data from the fishing fleet. They have a, quite a lot of in interesting information on board of these fishing vessels, mostly data that are not harvested. So the data that we are using now today um, to do our stock assessment and all other tasks that the Fisheries Institute does um, is not so good quality. So the first thing, and these are the official statistics. So first of all, we have the logbook data. Logbook data, every fishing vessel has a logbook and has a data entry once every 24 hours. They have to enter their catch into a logbook, which means that we have one data point for, let's say, 100 kilometers of fishing. A fishing vessel can easily cover uh, 100 kilometers in a day. So this is very low resolution. Then in terms of position, we have VMS data. It's also the official statistic where we have a ping every two hours, which is also quite low resolution. And we know for the logbook data that they um, are well, now and then fraudulent. So the quality of the data is, is not so good. Another source of data is, let's say, the balance sheets of the companies. For example, if we want to know how much fuel a fishing vessel uses, we have to go to the uh, accountancy balance sheets, uh, which means that we have one data point every year. We have the yearly fuel consumption of that vessel, which again is very low resolution and uh, with a long delay. We have to wait for more than a year to actually start using this data. And that's the same for uh, a lot of other economic and social data that we actually need. Anyway, all these data are stored in our database, but we know that there's a lot of other information in the fleet that we are not using. And I'll come back to that in a minute. So we add to this database the other biological and ecological data that we collect in the Institute. Um, and we also have made the database um, easy to connect to external data, like data from ICES, data from EMODNET, uh, Copernicus, and so on. So it's really very functional, easy to use thing. 
Uh, so what do we do with this data? Well, we carry out fish stock assessments. We uh, steer our gear selectivity experiments. We study seafloor disturbance. We do all kinds of impact studies, not only of fisheries, but also of wind farms, uh, sand mining, uh, dredging, and so on. We develop a food web model. We are working on a digital twin uh, of the fisheries and of the ocean. We study biodiversity, genetics, pollution, and so on. So a wide variety of tasks that come from that that we do by analyzing the data and by using all kinds of models to um, actually get the most out of these data. And these are used to feed into a number of projects. For example, Valduvis is a fisheries improvement program uh, where we try to guide our fishery to more sustainable fishing based on 11 indicators. And these indicators are calculated more or less automatically uh, from this database. So we have, say, a continuous update uh, of the indicators by vessel, uh, which makes it easy to follow up the vessels in terms of sustainability and also advise them on how to improve their um, sustainability. Then the plan is to build user-specific dashboards. So with, depending on the special needs of the different users, we select data and information from data and apps that are built on it to, um, to be used by these users. These are plans. Um, the one for the fishing industry, which I'm talking about today, is operational. So that's one of the dashboards, the first one that we have been actually building. Still a prototype, we're still working on the interface, but it's working, so that, that's nice. We want to do the same thing for researchers with diff different functionality, different data sources probably, um, for policy and management. And finally, we also hope that a number of these data can be sold on the market so it can uh, give, let's say, a form of income to the fishing industry. And the main idea is that we hope to sell the data to cover the costs to run the system. We don't know if it will be possible, but at least that's the goal. So it's all about this because we are missing this high resolution, high quality data um, in the system, which is one of the important pillars of the whole system, good quality data, which we don't have today. So and Vestools is the project that actually um, makes this possible. So how did Vestool start? It started with Pedro. Pedro is a fisherman he, that came to me some five years ago. And what he actually is doing, he, the time he is on board of the fishing vessel and he's not fishing, he has been fiddling around with instruments on board and connecting all different instruments to his laptop. And this is how it looked like. So it worked. It was fascinating what he was doing with all this data, but he needed a bit of help to make um, the, the system a bit more, uh, let's say, um, uh, streamlined and uh, more efficient in uh, connecting all these instruments. So what we did is we um, developed a piece of hardware, which we call the concentrator, uh, which can connect to, in principle, any tool or instrument that produces data. Um, it collects the data, it says them in the, in the standard um, data format and it loads them up to the cloud where we can use them. Uh, so we have direct access to this data. Uh, we developed a um, data standard, which we call POSEDAT, uh, not so much for scientific use, but especially for the companies who are building instruments, because we saw that, for example, fishing vessels have scales on board to weigh the fish from different manufacturers. And each manufacturer has a different data format. And even within a company, um, the scales, the, a new version of a scale would often have a different data format, which is really a, a hard thing to, to cover with because you, you set up a system, you start collecting data, but when the, the data formats from the machines is changed by the manufacturer, it kind of messes up the whole database. So that's why we have this POSEDAT um, data standard. Now, what does VestTools do? 
it, let's say that it converts the fishing fleet into a data collection platform feeding into a digital twin of a fishing vessel or a fishing fleet. That's the basic idea. Now, what do we have? Um, you see the vessel, typical beam trawler, and the sensors in red, that's the basic are the basic sensors, sensors that the system is based on. So we have the towing force, we have the GPS, we have the fuel consumption, and we have the scale. So let's say every fishing hole, in this case, eight times a day, we have a detailed uh, picture uh, by species of, uh, of the catch. Then the green ones are the optional ones, but that are already implemented for the moment. We're not receiving the data yet, uh, but we are working on it. So we have a weather station on board of these five vessels and a fishing gear sensor, which is a very interesting one. Um, it collects temperature, salinity, turbidity, and we are working on a sensor to uh, add light conditions. So these four factors are important for catching efficiency and for migration of fish. So we want to present this information to the fisherman so he gets an insight into the importance of these parameters for his fishery. And, um, and we hope that it will make his fishery more efficient. So by doing that, we also add functionality to his fishing vessels, which produces data that can, well, maybe it's a strong word, but let's say revolutionize his, his fishing, his way of fishing. And then we have the, the optional ones, like a crew tracker, um, information on the engine, um, connecting the echo sounder, but these are things that are optional um, and uh, will depend on the desires of the individual fishermen. We also are working on cameras on board. That's one of our um, main focuses for the next few years. We not only want to know what's in the commercial part of the catch, but we also want to know what is discarded. So we are working on image recognition and we want to analyze the discarded part of the catch, uh, not only of the commercial fish, but also of all other animals, invertebrates, commercial and non-commercial. Uh, also plastics, things like that. Um, and the idea is that this will give, let's say, a treasure of information on the ecosystem where these fishing fleets are fishing. 24 seven, year in, year out, for a whole fishing fleet, because that's the idea. We want to expand this from five vessels to the whole fishing fleet. And we hope that this information that comes from these cameras will be a big step in implementing the ecosystem approach of which have been, we have been talking for 20 years now, but haven't really moved on. And the reason we haven't moved on is because we are lacking data, good quality data. So all this data go to, into this concentrator, go into the cloud, and go to into our presentation system, which is called Vestools. Um, so now I will switch to, let's say, a live presentation of how we collect this data. Um, do you see the other screen? Can somebody let me know? Yes, Mr. Pole, we see okay. it. Thank you. Okay. Very well, thank you. So this is, let's say, the prototype of the interface to get access to the data. So this is what the skipper can see on board of his fishing vessel and what also the vessel owner can see on his laptop in his kitchen, for example, but also information that we have access to. So we have the basic instruments. So this is live. So we have a fishing vessel fishing in the Irish Sea. Is, uh, this is his course. He's uh, fishing at a speed of 3.60 knots. We have the towing force uh, of the two fishing gears in kilogram. We have the length of the fishing line. We have the fuel consumption over the last hour and over the last 24 hours with a nice uh, layout of the screen, let's say. Uh, we have information on the engine, like um, the temperature of the engine and the amount of hours it has been turning. So that's some basic information um, that the skipper can see on this main screen. Um, we have this map, 
uh, also showing the uh, vessels in the neighborhood. So based on the AIS, so the skipper and the vessel owner can also see the details of the vessel around fishing or um, moving around it. It's not only fishing vessels, it's um, also um, uh, commercial transport vessels. Uh, so all this information is easily accessible. We have the fuel consumption. So as I said, the fuel consumption for the moment, but also a, let's say, um, the historic data can be uh, downloaded. So here we see, for example, for the last uh, two days, what the fish, fishing vessel has been doing. Uh, here it was in the harbor doing nothing. Then the engine started. It started um, uh, moving around in the harbor. And then out of the harbor, it steamed to the fishing ground and started fishing. And we see this pattern of fishing, um, hauling the gear, emptying the catch, fishing again, and, and so on. So this gives us quite interesting information compared to the yearly fuel consumption of a vessel, which is the information we are using up till now. We now have really a huge step forward in, in detail. Um, the towing force is just another way of representing the towing force and the length of the fishing line. Uh, we have the catches. We can uh, look at the catch of the last few hours or the last few days or the whole trip. So we actually see by species the weight of the different species in the catch. Directly real-time, um, correct real data. And that's the most important thing because we don't really trust the official logbooks. Um, and then uh, there's, um, let's say, it's kind of a gadget. Um, um, trying to make fishermen use the engine and uh, the vessel in a more efficient way. So for example, here we have the speed, um, it's 3.7 knots. Um, it calculates the most efficient speed in these conditions. So the green, the, this um, needle should be in the green area. As soon as it's out of the green area, the color changes like here. So the length of his fishing line is 229 meter. And depending on the depth and the weight of the fishing gear, the system calculates what should be the optimum. So for the moment, the guy in the bridge uh, of the fishing vessel is not doing his best. Also fuel consumption. It should be in the green area, but for the moment he's in the red. So he's actually carrying out a fishery, which is according to the desire of the fishing uh, vessel owner is too intensive. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So now I'm going back to my other presentation. So on top of this, we provide the fisherman with a, uh, let's say, data analysis tool where he can look at his historical data. Uh, which we call Vestools Analytics. It's based on Power BI. That's just a piece of software that allows fishermen to um, uh, analyze data in a simple, accessible way. So this is what he sees. He can choose the year, the quarter, the month, the trip, the day, or the individual haul. He can choose areas and fish species. And here he sees for each bar is a trip where you see the value of the catch, the cost of the fuel uh, while fishing in black, and in red, the cost of the fuel while steaming. And he sees this, sees this for his different fishing trips. And he actually can see the uh, gross value of his catch on this kind of heat map uh, in the sea. And he can fiddle around. He can zoom in, he can zoom out and he can fiddle around with uh, periods and with species. Um, the idea, so this is only a first step. What we want to do, if we get more vessels involved and more data, we actually want to work on a catch prediction system. And the, the stock assessment we are doing today has a delay of, let's say, two years from the moment we start collecting the data until the quota advice, that takes two years, 
We all we really want to work on a system that predicts the catches for the next 24 hours, based on what we uh, all see on our cell phones with the weather forecast apps. So that's our inspiration. So we want to collect sufficiently uh, reliable data so we can actually start um, predicting catches. So fishermen can use this catch prediction to make his fishery more efficient. So target the high concentrations of commercial fish, but at the same time, avoid undersized fish, avoid fish species for which the quota are low, avoid threatened and uh, endangered species. So that's all information we want to collect amongst others with the cameras and use it to build this kind of tools. He can also look at his, at his individual holes. He can select one of these holes. So the, the individual holes, the colors um, give an indication of its profitability, the efficiency of the hole. So the red ones are the good ones. The yellow ones are the bad ones. Uh, he can select an individual hole, see what kind of fish he has been catching and the weight of the fish um, and also the value. So, yeah, I won't go into detail um, into this one. This is just on the cameras on board. So I'll, I'll switch that one. You, I, I'm sure you uh, get the idea. But one important thing I want to, to stress, and that's the last part of my presentation, is how do you get fishermen along in um, this data collection and in actually offering the data to the scientists uh, to use them? And uh, what we thought, what we found in our case, every case is different, I know, um, but in our case that we had to build trust and mutual understanding between the scientists, the fishermen, the NGOs, and, and the government. So we, in August um, 2011, we signed what we call a covenant for the promotion of sustainable Belgian uh, fishing sector. Um, a formal signing of a contract where we, these five parties, let's say, promise to work on the sustainability of the fishing um, and in the meantime, try to understand each other's problems and uh, try to find solutions. Um, so we want to record and promote real change and we want real stakeholder involvement because Stakeholder involvement has been a buzzword, let's say, the last 10 years, but very often stakeholder involvement is limited to meeting rooms in Brussels, with all respect, but very often we don't reach the fishermen. Um, for example, with the landing obligation, I think it's a nice example, there's none of the fishermen on board of fishing vessels that actually get it and understand what it really is and what it means and why it is that. Um, so we really have to reach the fishermen, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, so we did this with, uh, let's say, three projects. First of all, we have what we call Vestraict, which is a long-term vision on um, improving the sustainability of the fishing fleet, which was uh, written by a local NGO. So it's not a government, not a scientist, not a fisherman who wrote this, but an actual NGO, and we uh, find high value in um adding ngos to this consortium let's say uh, it's very important because they they watch and they they make sure that we are not greenwashing so they really have to be act actively involved in our case every case is different i know then we developed this system of these 11 indicators to calculate the sustainability of the fishery and uh, where we can see if the fishery is improving or not and then finally, and that's then the, 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 the price that the fishermen get, we have this um, label, which indicates, it says Vessere Verduurzaamt, which doesn't, it does not say that our fishery is sustainable, but it says that we are working on sustainability. We are improving the sustainability. Uh, and fishermen can use this to, to sell their catch. Um, so what are the incentives for the fishermen to provide data? Well, first of all, the fishermen are the first clients uh, for getting information out of this data. Um, 
participation adds to its sustainability score. So one of the indicators is about delivering data for science, not control and enforcement for science. So when fishermen um, enter this program of data collection, the VEST tools program, they get a better score in their sustainability. So that's a nice incentive. Um, it also allows them to cope with legislation and unfair allegations. And that's a bit of a problem these days that fisheries are blamed um, for all the bad things that happen in the ocean. In a number of cases, uh, rightfully so, um, but in a number of cases, not correct. Uh, and before we were not able, we had, didn't have the data to actually um, prove what fisheries are actually doing to the environment. Um, but now we are starting to getting this data. And I want to give an example of seafloor disturbance. Uh, what you see here is a map uh, of a fishing ground in the English Channel, where you see the sediment types. So the yellow is sandy. And we know from, from our research that sandy areas in shallow uh, water are quite dynamic and are not vulnerable at all to, uh, to trawling to seafloor disturbance. Then you have the purple one, which are the stony areas of which we know that they are very vulnerable. They, it's really uh, devastating if a trawl is dragged through these stony areas where there's a lot of organisms attached to the stones with a high biodiversity. So they should not fish there. And then there's the more muddy areas. So what we used to do with our VMS data so one ping every two hours, very low resolution. We did not have the choice to really get into detail. So we had to lay a grid over this map and uh, give it a color according to its sensitivity. So for example, if there's a grid cell with quite a lot of stony area, we would say, well, that's a sensitive area, despite the fact that there's also sandy areas around. So like this, we classify each grid cell in terms of sensitivity to seafloor disturbance. Now what happens when we get detailed data on where these fishermen are actually fishing? This is the picture. So they're actually not um, or rarely fishing into the stony areas. They're really selecting the sandy areas which are not vulnerable. Um, so my point is that it's uh, in our case, important to use the data of the fishermen to um, get a correct picture of their impact on the marine ecosystem, much more correct than it used to be. And in this case, it's in the advantage of the fishermen. So again, an incentive to deliver data to science. Then maybe one day they will be able to sell their data. And in our case, we have detached ourselves from control and enforcement. I have the impression that in the fish X projects, this is a, a different situation. Um, but in our case, it was difficult to motivate fishermen to deliver their detailed data if we, there would be a risk that these data come into the hands of control and enforcement. So we will see about the future, but for the moment, we can only get their cooperation if we keep it strictly sector science. Voilà. And that's it. I hope I did not take too much time. Um, I thank you for your attention. And I give the floor back to, um, to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dr. Pole, for, uh, for, for, for this very impactful presentation, I think. Uh, I have a short question. Uh, um, what is your, in your opinion, what are required preconditions or legal legal instruments to uh, let fishermen on, or fisher or vessel owners to uh, to have this equipment? Because um, to collect uh, and deliver data, uh, they have these vessels. You talk, they they have to 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 be equipped. Yes. And uh, what what solution um, has been made in in Belgium already? Um, well, I don't know if I understand your question. Uh, the question is uh, the question is that uh, the vessels you told us, us about in Belgium 
vessels, yes? Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, they should have equipment, yes? Necessary yes. equipment. And how, uh, through what legal uh, requirements or legal instruments you can uh, let fishers and uh, fisher vessel owners uh, to buy this equipment? Okay. Well, the we are actually in, in um, except for what I call the concentrator, so the piece of information that collects the data, we do not um, install any new equipment on board. We're only using the instruments that they all already have. A GPS, a fuel consumption meter, towing force in the fishing line, these things are already on board. They are producing data and they have been for a long time. The only thing we do is we connect them to the concentrator and upload it to the cloud. And then the legal thing that comes in then there that we have a data sharing agreement. So the data are in principle always owned by the fishing company. It's their data. And with this data sharing agreement, we make very clear for what and for how long we as scientists will use the data. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Pollet. Uh, now I would like to draw your attention to the questions that the consortium has prepared for the today's discussion. And I would like to make a point on the fact that this for the consortium, it's very important to get each kind of information on practical experience of our colleagues. <clears throat> as, as indicated of Mr. Pollet, it is absolutely right that each uh, uh, case is very individual and each country has uh, other opportunities and other experience. And we would like to uh, um, invite our distinguished uh, participants for our discussion. I think that uh, um, Mrs. Christina Raptuidi is raising the hand. Christina, do you hear us? Yes. Hello. Thank you. Yes, Christina. Yes. You're welcome. Uh, hello. Uh, so, uh, very quick question. Thank you for the presentation. That was uh, that was quite useful. I'm afraid I wasn't able to um, to get through the beginning of that, but it it still was uh, was very good. Thank you. Uh, just just a very quick question. Bearing in mind uh, the the amount of ships in the fleet that uh, you have used as an example. Um, I'm just thinking how this would work for the for the Greek reality. And um, we will be dealing with about 12,000 ships and at least 1,000 of those are sending through real-time data at any time. This means much bigger data, quite extended data cleansing, more data, more errors, etc. So, if if we were to in to incorporate a solution like the one that you are presenting, and that would be obviously tremendously useful, I'm just not sure if uh, the the modeling and the detail level that you have uh, that you have explained here would work for uh, for such a big fillet or um, the, this kind of this kind of big data big data sets. Uh, have you thought of uh, of the of the ways that this solution would probably work against much more real time data yeah. for fleets like the Greek one or uh, uh, I don't know other countries that might be receiving so much data on a daily basis? Yeah. I understand the the problem, of course. I think we are in a, in a very comfortable position with a small fleet. We started with one vessel, um, I think two and a half years ago, and it took us one and a half year to actually get this thing really working because it's very easy to um, lay out ideas and be creative on how to innovate, but bringing the ideas into practice and make them work on board of fishing vessels in difficult conditions, it's a very different thing. So. I agree with you. Um, it's it's not easy, especially if, if you have to scale up. So 
when we scaled up from this one vessel to five vessels, it was again a challenge because instruments are different, situations are different. Um, so there's not one fishing vessel that is equal to, to another. Um, so with these five vessels now, it took us another six months to make it operational. And we hope next year we will expand it to the whole fleet. It's going to be again a burden. So I can imagine doing that for 12,000 vessels is quite a huge task because you actually have to go on board. You have to send technicians on board of each individual vessel to install the hardware and to make the connections. And so um, it's a big step. Yes, um, I think it's possible eh? in, in terms of amount of data. I, I don't see the problem. Um, even in our case, where we're sending over quite large amounts of data um, per vessel, they use, just use their satellite connection. They all have Facebook on board these days, so they have data packages enough. And what we are using is just a fraction of what the crew is using for Facebook. So data data flows or amounts of data is not a problem. I think the amount of vessels and the different conditions on board of all these vessels and getting cooperation of the fishermen, that, that is the, the hard thing to do. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Foley. Christina, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, dear, dear friends, please, for, uh, if you have some uh, questions uh, on clarification, uh, to Mr. Paulette's presentation, please raise your hands. Uh, uh, Simon van der Wulp from North IO, you're welcome. Yes, good morning. Um, Simon, Simon van der Wulp, North IO, also a consortium member of the, of the FishX uh, project. Uh, thank you, Mr. Paulette, for the very interesting um, um, uh, presentation. Um, I, have, I have one question. Um, since we're in the FishX uh, project and we're looking a bit like data from its source to its data user, um, in your case, like how you sketch the system, I've got uh, two questions. One is, um, uh, would you intend to use this for the Belgian case or the Belgian vessels only? That's one. And my second question would be, who is the official owner of the data? Uh, yes. Um, no, we, we do not intend to keep this, this exclusively Belgian. We actually um, we shared our um, our system with the Dutch colleagues, so I think there's some between five and ten Dutch fishing vessels uh, using it, not in cooperation with the scientists, but as individual companies. So they're actually using the data for themselves without sharing, which is fine. Eh? It's their data, mm -hmm. um, and the system is also installed on board of uh, I think some 15 um, uh, commercial transport vessels. Um, and it, it's easily, um, it, it can easily be incorporated in any type of vessel. So that's the an answer to your first question. The second one is the vessel owner, in our case, always is the owner of the data as well. And he can share it. And if he wants to stop sharing, he stops sharing. Okay, and that's um, why the the um, let's say the um, connection between the different parties, the trust we have built between scientists and fishermen is is so important. Mm -hmm. They, for the moment, they are very easily sharing their data, their data with us. Yeah, um, can I, if I, Igor, if I, if I'm allowed to do a follow-up question very quickly without yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, Simon, please. Um, um, the the trust which you build, I said that's a very important partner. You have to come to a term of agreement with the directly with the fishermen. Am I allowed to use this this data? And you make a contract, so let's say uh, uh, terms of agreement. Uh, what data is used, how it's used, etc. Um, and this is a, a, a personal uh, appointment you have, like you you you. This is a direct contact, or is this also an automated thing in your system? Oh, this is this is a personal contact. Yeah. Okay. So that means that also, if you would like to scale this, for example, over two thousand uh, vessels in Greece, then you would need to have some kind of a tool to, or like tool, or like an uh, an ability to formulate a contract which you can make 
so either online or like directly. Like this could be uh, also a bit more streamlined than probably. So I right? think yeah, it's in principle. In principle, it's easy to automate that. Okay. It's just a matter. Of, it's a choice whether you want to do it or not, and that depends on on your situation. Of course. Okay. Good. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Very very uh, important point. I think yes. Okay. Um, so the questions for today's discussion are uh, here on our screen, and we are all interlinked to the general discussion point. Uh, now we have many comments in the chat already from Croatia, for example, but uh, Marius, uh, you are welcome. Yes. Thanks, Igor. I was just uh, <laughs> yeah, pointing out that we already have some some questions in the chat, but also um, following up on this, um, yeah, maybe we can just do the questions in the chat, but then if we have time afterwards, uh, Mr. Pillay, I would be interested in hearing also a bit on uh, more elaborate what made you decide to detach from control and enforcement. Uh, maybe you have some some more background on this, but uh, yeah, I would like to to give the others first the floor for the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Marius. So I would underline the questions are um, we are very interested Fishix Consortium in practical experience of different EU countries and on future oriented uh, needs. I would uh, say so. Uh, who would start um, with uh, the first? Uh, the first question: What are the data sets that are required by the maritime authorities to properly monitor EU fisheries? Um, maybe, uh, Mr. Wessendorf, maybe you could say several words on your experience and German experience, German perspective. Mr. Wessendorf uh, unfortunately doesn't hear us. Then, yeah, yes, Marius. Uh, no, I, I don't know if you, you could see this, but there was a uh, questions in the chat from, from Emmanuel, from the consortium, and then also from... Uh, yes, Philippine. I will read it up. Yeah, I will read it up. Uh, yeah. It is a question from Emmanuel, Mr. Emmanuel Dirdi. It is a consortium member company OURZ, uh, who is writing, also if possible, I would be interested to know more about the sustainability indicators that are being used within the system. I think it is a question uh, on Mr. Polet. Well, I, Emmanuel, please, please, uh, you are raising your hand. You're welcome. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks, sorry. Um, First of all, thanks, thanks as well from my side, uh, Mr. Pellet, for the presentation. Um, I had uh, I had a question before before the one that you uh, just read out, and um, that's basically um, regarding the the insights that you gather through through your system or the platform. And I was interested if if you've got any information um, on to which extent fishers are actually using the dashboard or the insights. Um, if you track that, or if, if you don't track that, and then also you you talked about and that's the second question you just mentioned. Um, you talked about the some kind of sustainability indicators. I think eleven or something, um, which you used to assess the sustainability um, score. Um, so that would be the follow up. Thanks. Yes. Um, well, the the fishermen. You have to know. I don't know about your situation, but in Belgium, the fishermen used to. And, and many still today write down their catches in, in, in little books on paper. And, um, and most of the data that are produced by instruments is just real time and then are lost. Um, so being confronted with the tools, the software tools that we offer them, they are really excited. When they see what information is in their data, and how we they can visualize it on on maps on sea maps and see their fishing grounds and their efficiency and so on. Um, they are very much interested. And when before fishermen were still a little bit reluctant to for joining this program, let's say half of the fleet is lining up and 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 they say we cannot wait. We 
actually the, the first the vessel owner who joined the program, um, I met his wife shortly after we installed the system and she complained to me. She said, you know what happened? My husband now bought a laptop to take along on our holiday in order to see what the vessel is doing. So they, they are really excited, yes. Um, and then the second thing, the sustainability, sustainability indicators. Um, yeah, we, this is very open. Um, I would suggest that maybe you send me an email and I can direct you to the website where you can find all the information on the indicators, if you like. Great, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Mm, uh, so we have uh, a question, I would uh, read it up from the chat from Philip Maxam, who represented his uh, Croatia uh, um, Fisheries Department from Agriculture Ministry. Hello everyone, I am Philip from Croatia. I have questions. I guess fishermen must be connected on internet for all that you speaking, but what with data 